Morning. Are you seeing this flicker? What? Oh, huge fail, Pete. Huge fail. Huge fail. What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here. Welcome back to yet another video and today we're talking my desk tour, my desk setup, how I get things done, where do I get things done, and what are the things that I use to get things done. Feeling good, blinds are open, sun is shining, the sun's actually not shining, it's perfectly overcast, but I never record with the blinds open because it's just too distracting. You know, a nice car goes by, a nice truck goes by, loud exhaust goes by, I'm looking. I'm just one of those people, you know? I just love looking out the window. I used to get in trouble in high school for that. My mathematics teacher, grade nine, actually called home and told my parents, Peter seems to be very distracted by the window. <laughs> that was enough, that happened. A little life update real quick. Started pouring my sparkling water into a pint glass because when I can see how much I need to drink, I'll drink it instead of just like cracking open a can, taking a sip and leaving it there and never coming back. This was meant to be a two minute Tuesday, but it's Wednesday because I didn't get it done on Tuesday. So I would, let's start a timer to see how fast we can do it. I, I would love to stick to it. <laughs> Throw that timer on there and let's, let's jump into the desk tour. So I love these types of videos. I, anytime any of my creator friends post any sort of office update, desk tour update, what's in my bag, what's in my tech bag, what's like all of those things, I, I am in. That's a watch later, that's a save to my list, that's a stop everything I'm doing and watch now. Love that. Because it gives me ideas on how to be productive. And I will say, there is no motivation like cleaning up your space or rearranging your space to give you a fresh perspective and a boost in productivity and creativity. It feels so good. It's probably why I've been doing it since I was a kid. I change my room around all the time because it's just energized me, it made me feel great and made me want to just get after something. So this is my desk setup. Now my office is at the very back of the studio. Now I have it that way so I'm not in the way. If things are happening, if things are being done, if things are being shot or any kind of meetings are going on, I'm so far removed at the very back that it doesn't matter. Now this is my in-studio desk tour. I have an entire home office that you actually haven't seen before so uh, maybe in the new year if this video gets enough likes or enough views, maybe I'll do the uh, the exclusive home office edition because it's it's looking spicy right now. Pretty pumped on that. Got my drums in there too. Woohoo! Little music setup, just mm, love that. Back to this setup. I'm using a fully standing desk. Now I never actually stand at it, so I don't even have it plugged in. I just liked the size of it and the walnut matched all the other walnut services in the office. Now on top of that, I have a Grove made iMac stand. Now that stand is for an iMac, but I just have my laptop placed on it because it elevates it a little bit, be it that I'm using it as a second monitor. So the main monitor, the whole system is being powered by the Apple Pro Display XDR, the nano glass version, because I don't want to see myself in the reflection when I'm editing my photos. I don't want to see lights. I don't want to see glass. I don't want to see anything because I have so many LED strips and lights. It needed to be that perfect anti-reflective. It's a yellow Bronco right there. How do you see, like how do you not get distracted by a super bright yellow Bronco going by? Is that the Bronco Sport? Oh, that doesn't count. Okay, moving on. That monitor has all the USB-C ports that I need. It looks beautiful from the back. So when you're coming into my office, it looks like a piece of art. It's incredible. Now, all of that is powered by the new MacBook Pro 16 inch. And I wanted to give you a little example of how good that MacBook Pro 16 inch is. You saw the video that we made on it where we rendered different things and timed it out. The other day, I finished a vlog. I didn't transcode any R5 footage. I just dumped it into the timeline, started editing, no lag, perfect, no issues. Drone footage, GoPro footage, all of those three things. It was a, a vlog for my pirate channel that you haven't seen yet. I colored it entirely and I exported it. Now we did the same thing on the Mac Pro, which is like fully stacked RAM through the roof. All of that footage had been transcoded, had been pre-rendered. That export took 32 minutes. 
The MacBook Pro did it, unplugged, in three minutes. Yeah. That is absurd. So that powers my desk. That sits front and center, acts as my secondary screen, Slack, email, messaging, that sort of stuff there. The big screen, I reserve for creative. So that's Premiere Pro, After Effects, Photoshop, Lightroom, those types of things. Now recently, I've updated my keyboards. I think we blew past the timer. I just have a gut feeling. Um, I'm sorry. It's time for a coffee break. I need it. I need it. At home, I'm using a mechanical keyboard because, oh my goodness, it feels so good. Now here, I'm using the Logitech MX keys. That's also paired with the MX Master 3, and those are both made for Mac. So I don't actually need the little receiver that you would typically use and put in the back of your computer. Also being that this is a 2021 MacBook Pro and the XDR, I don't even have a USB 2 port anywhere on it. It's all USB-C. So I can't even plug in that adapter without using a dongle and I, I just don't care. It's Bluetooth, it's super close. I don't find that there's any lag. Keyboard's good, it's got good travel on it. It's not too loud, so if I'm typing on it and there's people everywhere, I find those mechanical keyboards might be like a bit. All right, dude, are you writing a novel? Because that can stop anytime soon. At home, it doesn't matter, I'm in the basement, I'm isolated. But here, it's a nice kind of low profile keyboard. The mouse, I got. I could make a whole video about this mouse. The reason I'm not using the Magic Keyboard or the Magic Mouse is because I gave my iMac Pro to my sister and she needs the keyboard and mouse that go with that, so I had to replace them. I don't know why it's taken me so long to stop using the Magic Mouse. Just the fact that the USB-C charging port is on the bottom should have literally just sent me off the edge years ago, but for whatever reason, I just put up with it until recently switching over to the MX3. It is so good. It is ergonomically perfection. The scroll wheel is immensely satisfying. It's a magnetic scroll wheel, so the tactile feedback feels so good. You can hit the button on the top and it gets rid of that and free scrolls, which is also fun. Half the time I just end up scrolling that wheel and stopping it because it's almost like a fidget spinner. It's got a really nice side scroll. If you are editing, you can scroll through your timeline left and right just with your thumb. I find that very, very helpful. This mouse also charges from the front. So if it dies, you plug it in, you're good to go. I'm so fully converted, it probably sounds like this is a sponsored video for the MX Master 3 and it is not the case, but I will leave an affiliate link in the description below. I do get kickback from that, so if you do buy one, just know that's an affiliate link. But it's worth putting down there because it's so good. Other notable things on my desk. That would be the Anchor Mag Go 623. This fun, shrunken down, little soda can looking item that sits on top of your desk, nicely weighted with a good rubber bottom, acts as a charger for your phone or your accessories. So it's got the magnetic top fastened nicely. And then also, if you wanted to display it while you're sitting at your desk, it tilts forward, straighten that out, and now you have a nice stand. You might also want to use that in a horizontal orientation, no problem move that sideways. Extra surface on top that also charges extra accessories like your headphones. So you're not only charging your phone, your headphones, but you've also got a stand and a place to keep both of them. Decluttered, it's kind of the theme of today. Using devices and things that take up less of a footprint that actually work for you. I'll probably be switching to the black one, but they do have four different colors to choose from. My wife has already called dibs on this one. Links down below if you wanna check out this product. Thank you to Anchor for sponsoring this video, sponsoring my desk tour, and for keeping my desk clean and tidy. I appreciate you. I got a little stand for my watch. I don't like typing and having the clasp smacking against the desk that just, one, it doesn't seem right, 
and two, it's massively annoying. Sometimes I even have to like take my rings off when I'm working and I just have a little dish and I just throw all that stuff to the side with my wallet and my keys and I like to empty my pockets if I'm gonna get into the zone and just get into the zone, no distractions. I'm big on setting the stage for success, I guess you could say. One little thing that distracts me, that takes me out of my creative flow that can sometimes be so hard to find and get into, even if it sounds as silly as a watch band, that's one thing I don't want near me when I'm working. I want to be honed in to my work. I want to be one with it. It sounds cheesy and it sounds kind of like lame, but if you just eliminate several distractions that you think might break your flow and then they're not there and you don't break the flow, you'd be surprised how much more work you get done, how much more you get into your work because you're not being pulled out of it over and over and over. I'm huge on that. My glass door is shut. My headphones are on. My accessories are off my hands. Do not bother me. One of the things when building this office that I was adamant on was putting an outlet in the floor. It's one of those things you never think about. The computer has to still be plugged in and you're blocking the throughway or it's coming off your desk onto the back wall. Having an outlet directly below me keeps cables minimal. I literally have one cable going to that, which is fantastic. It's also got ethernet, which is wired to our entire server. So if I need to access files and I don't wanna do it wirelessly, I don't wanna speed it up, I can plug in through ethernet, never really use that. The only thing I'm missing is speakers. Now, now I've got a set of these U2 speakers, which are good, but what I've never liked about studio monitors is how you've got to set up the speaker cable and then they both usually need a power source. They both connect together. It takes cable management and it just directly destroys it. And I'm a big non-clutter person. I work better without clutter. And if I'm editing with my headphones on, for the most part, which I am, I, I don't feel like speakers are something that are, are a necessity. They're handy when you're browsing, when you're surfing, and you're just watching something fun, whatever. That's good because you, it sounds incredible. But the laptop speakers for me, especially on this new MacBook Pro, sound really nice. I don't think it's warranted getting a set of HS5s, HS7s, something massive that's just gonna cause way more clutter. One more thing, now I gotta get something to control those. The simpler I keep things, the more I do, the more I work the more I use those things. The more you introduce, the less I use things and the least amount of enjoyment I get when using those things. I don't have drawers on my desk. I don't have little slide out trays on my desk. I end up just filling them with stuff. I love accessories, you know me. What's in your pockets? <laughs> love that sort of thing. So very quickly I would I would find myself putting pens and keychains and knives and different fidget items and and receipts and stuff and it would just start to build. AirPods build and build and build before I know it there's just stuff everywhere. So I find that if I have nowhere to put anything, I just don't put anything on my desk because that's not where it belongs. And I'm a big advocate of that, keeping that workspace clean and tidy. It's imperative to my success anyway. I'm sure there are some people out there that just love to just jam it with things and they're like, ah, a messy desk is the sign of a creative mind. Sure, like the more videos we're doing and the harder we're working, for sure. But there's also a difference between someone who's a hoarder and a slob and someone who just wants to be efficient. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers to the hoarders. <laughs> I'm a slob, you know. So that's it, that is my desk tour. It's pretty simple, a little more of a convoluted setup at home, at the home office. If you like this video and you like kind of seeing the process, I live for this stuff, I love it, and I would love to make another one or answer any questions that you might have. Links below to all the products that you saw in this video if you are interested in getting any of them for yourself and you liked what you saw. Did I, did I do the, was that good? Was that a good little office tour? I mean, like what, there's not much to it. You, you kind of just show your office and talk about it. I, and there's, it just seems like I should be doing more. Like what, how do I, but I mean, that's, it is very much what it is. What did you think? Did that satiate your desire to see my office? I had fun, I had a good time. I hope you did too. See you guys in the next video. Peace.